concluding the first chapter, uh, part two, the system of justice. The system of justice must always endeavor to settle disagreements and conflicts quickly and correctly to be efficacious. Procrastination and sloth when there is duty and responsibility. Procrastination and slot when there are obstacles on the path of proper settlement of disagreements and conflicts only lead to errors and injustice ultimately. It is clearly impossible to achieve justice like this. If the system of justice is slow, litigants not having sufficient monetary power simply discontinue their case. They may also discontinue their case to avoid negative changes being made to their individual lives. Family lives, businesses, etc. Also, after a while, the quality of the evidence being used in the case may depreciate. The witnesses are mere humans and may, may not remember every important detail or fact of the case. In a nutshell, prompt settlement of disagreements and conflicts is highly important in the efficacy of the system of justice. Establishments and processes in the settlement of disagreements and conflicts. The connection between establishments in the settlement of disagreements and conflicts. Parliament. The parliament is the principal authority and establishment invested with the power to make laws. The parliament makes it possible to stop future disagreements and conflicts from occurring. The parliament also makes it possible to minimize them ahead of time. The parliament functions by making new laws it also modifies or amends old laws following jurisdictional standards and resulting from the input of the people in a process that is clearly democratic. The police and agencies of law enforcement. All power and authority is granted by the lawmaking body. The main function of the police is to detect and uncover crime, to stop crime, arrest criminals and law breakers, and take them to the courts. The presence of the police protects the people and the society and helps them, helps to stop disagreements and conflicts and other disorderly behaviors. Courts. The courts are the main centers for the settlement of disagreements and conflicts within the system of justice. The courts are mostly employed when other avenues or choices for the settlement of disagreements and conflicts are unsuccessful or insufficient. for the attainment of justice, peace, and contentment. The courthouses are the establishments where complaints or charges of wrongful behavior are processed in accordance with the law. The courthouses are also the places where all who have been charged with violating the law are processed in accordance with the law. The courts are ruled over by highly learned and accomplished individuals who have great experience in the law profession. 
the courts are arranged according to their functions and importance. Easing the process of resolving disagreements and conflicts and making it more efficacious. The courts have levels of specialization in the settlement of certain kinds of disagreements and conflicts. They enhance a system of appeals and support the doctrine of precedent in legislation. The principal business of the court is to settle disagreements and conflicts by penalizing offenders and violators, guaranteeing and defending the rights of the people, each and every member of the community, and maintaining orderliness at all times. Establishments and processes employed in the settlement of disagreements and conflicts, specialized courts and tribunals, Specialized courts and tribunals are specialized establishments which make important contributions to the efficacious process of the settlement of disagreements and conflicts by producing highly learned and skilled personnel capable of resolving the recurring and challenging problems in the settlement of disagreements and conflicts. Specialized courts and tribunals also have the advantage of being faster and less expensive than other courts and therefore are more convenient to use. They are also fairly easy to access and employ, easier than the other traditional courts. Highlights of the adversary trial process. The adversary trial process has the following main stages. One, pre-trial. Two, trial and three, post-trial. Highlights, adversary trial process. One, there are some particular pre-trial processes which are necessary. Two, allows litigants, both plaintiff and defendant to be aware of issues in disagreements and conflicts, civil cases, and help them achieve satisfactory resolutions outside the court. Three, allows judgments to be made regarding weight of evidence. That is, whether there is enough evidence to allow conviction in criminal cases. Four, impartial and incorruptible judiciary or similar authority. Five, laws and regulations regarding right process and weight of evidence helps disagreements and conflicts to be resolved promptly and fairly. The litigants, plaintiff and defendant are given a good chance to make and establish their cases. Six, attorneys, defense counsels, etc. provided by the court enable indigent litigants, plaintiffs or defendants to attend and participate in the proceedings of the court. Seven, opportunity for appeals gives unhappy parties a second chance. Law profession, one, they have the main duty and responsibility of settlement of clients disagreements and conflicts in accordance with the law. Two, they have studied the law and gained knowledge of it. This leads to fair trials and helps disputing parties to reach better decisions regarding legal proceedings. Three, duties and responsibilities. A, as three, a, giving legal counsel or advice to clients concerning their rights, status in accordance with the law and justice, responsibilities, etc. B. Representing and defending clients before a judge in accordance with the law and helping settle disagreements and conflicts. Jails and uh, correctional facilities. 
one. All power and authority granted by the law, by the lawmakers. Two, establishment, establishments for the detention and correction of lawbreakers in accordance with the law, where all offenders are held for various violations of the law and disorderly behavior. Three, absolutely necessary for the correct working of the systems of justice and fair judgments making criminal law capable of being enforced and efficacious. Categorization of laws. There are quite a few varieties of the law. These can be grouped in many ways. Laws have objectives, sources, private or civic natures, fields of rule, etc and can be categorized accordingly. Categorizations mostly concentrate on the field of rule or domain of control given by diverse aspects or areas of the law. Criminal law. <coughs> Criminal law consists of viola violations of the law and wrongs done against the people or the state. These wrongs signify breaking standing rules and regulations regarding anticipated ways of behavior and action among humans. The wrong actions, breaking rules and regulations are prosecuted in accordance with the law. Criminal law deals with terrible wrongs, for example, killing, abduction, larceny and robbery, assault and battery, etc. And criminal law may be again classified into two important kinds of wrongs indictable wrongs and summary wrongs an indictable wrong is a very grave criminal wrong for instance assault and battery or grand larceny which is prosecuted in a traditional criminal court before a highly learned and experienced judge and jury. A summary wrong is a wrong not very grave. For example, violations of motor vehicle or traffic rules and regulations, which is also prosecuted in a traditional court, but before a magistrate only. Civil law. Civil law is a special branch of law. It rules on relationships between persons, associations, companies, etc. in society and brings justice where a person's rights have been violated or denied. The goal of the goal or objective of civil law is to help a complainant seek justice in accordance with the law who maintains that he or she has had his or her rights violated or denied, thereby suffering pain and setback. The objectives of civil law is to res resolve such problems in accordance with the law, and thus any disagreement or conflict that is legal but not criminal is civil. Civil law resolves all such problems. Civil law has many aspects or branches listed as follows. Administrative law, company law, consumer law, discrimination law, family law, law of contract, law of thoughts, property law, etc. It is important to observe that not every violation in the above categories is a civil law matter. It depends on the weight and gravity of the violation or offense. For example, there are many obvious wrongs done to women and children that cannot be appropriately classified as family law issues, but criminal law cases.